If you are currently running Google Ads, I can almost guarantee that in the past seven days, you have received a recommendation either through your Google Ads dashboard, through an email from a Google rep, or even a phone call for you to start using Performance Max or Demand Gen campaigns. But the most important question is, which one is the right one for your business, or should you be using either Demand Gen or Performance Max for your business in 2025? So what I wanna do in this video to help you make that choice as to whether Performance Max or Demand Gen is right for your business, I wanna take you through the five core differences between these two types of campaigns. And the learning starts right now. Now, regardless of which campaign you're using inside of Google Ads, the one thing that is for sure is that you need to have a very clear strategy on how you're gonna be optimizing those campaigns. And this is especially true for Performance Max and Demand Gen. And to make sure that you're covering all of the critical optimizations and also that you know when you should be doing these optimizations because some optimizations need to be done weekly, whereas others are more done on a monthly or a quarterly basis. To make sure you've got all this right, what I want you to do is I want you to go through and follow the link in the description below so that you can get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist so that you know exactly how to optimize your performance max and your demand gen campaigns. All right, now let's get on to those five core differences between performance max and demand gen. And we're gonna start right at the beginning, which is what is the campaign objective of each of these types of campaigns? And really answering that question, and why did Google create these campaigns and what was their purpose and what was their goal? Because what I do find with Google Ads recommendations and especially when you're talking with a rep, they can sometimes have a bit more of a sales focus, which is really moving away from the core documentation which Google released when it launched these campaigns. And that's what we're gonna dive into and give you a quick summary about these types of campaigns. And let's firstly start with Performance Max. Now to put it simply, Performance Max was a campaign that was created which takes into account all of your current conversion data inside of your Google Ads account. And then it looks to find new customers. So looking at people who have converted, it looks to find similar or related people who will convert and it pushes it across all of Google's different advertising networks. There's sort of the mantra that Google is pushing that it's one campaign for all of your Google Ads needs. So that one campaign can push it across search, shopping, video, display, and also the Gmail networks. And a core foundation of a Performance Max campaign is that you only have the option for smart bidding. So when you start a campaign, you need to go either into maximize conversions or maximize conversion value. And then on top of that, you can also put in a target CPA or a target ROAS. So there is no starting gear here. It's basically straight into a maximized conversions campaign. And it's for that reason that I don't start with Performance Max. And think about it like this, you know, if you were to start a brand new search or shopping campaign, would you move directly to maximize conversions? And most people, the vast majority of people would not do that. And the reason for that is because it's detrimental to your business because moving directly into maximize conversions means that you're gonna be having a higher CPC. And if Google doesn't have enough conversion data inside of your account, how can it get more conversions? versions from your current conversion data if you don't have any conversion data. Hopefully that makes sense, but I know you see the point. Maximize conversions was built to generate more conversions. So it's highly effective when you've got a good level of base conversions in your account, and then you add it on top of your current campaign. So whether it be a search or shopping or a combination of search and shopping, so that it can go out and effectively find more conversions from what it is currently finding in your account. Now, I do wanna give a warning with Performance Max, and that is that if you were just to start a Performance Max campaign on top of a current search campaign, and you didn't have these two core settings inside of your Performance Max campaign, being that you're bidding for new customers only, and also that you're excluding your own brand, you are gonna find very, very quickly that the Performance Max campaign will just come through and target branded traffic and target you know, high converting, high intent search traffic, which would have converted anyway through your search and or your shopping campaigns. So that's why, I do want to give that warning that if you were to engage in a performance max campaign to make sure that you've got those key settings in place, excluding brand and targeting it for new customers only. So the simple way of thinking about the purpose of a performance max campaign is to take your keywords and your audiences, which are currently converting and find similar types of audiences because more often than not, performance max will heavily spend on the search and the shopping networks. And generally what you find, it will target one of those at about 80 to 90%. So if you're a lead generation business with no shopping feed, about 80 to 90% is gonna be going on search. If you're an e-commerce brand, what we generally find is that your performance max will slant one way. So it'll all be 
or shopping and a little bit of search or all search and a little bit of shopping. So now that brings us to the demand gen campaigns and demand gen campaigns are different because with the targeting, yes, you can do a maximized conversion value or maximized conversion setting, but you can also go for impressions or go for more of an outreach campaign. So it is inherently different to Performance Max. Some people have been explaining that demand gen is basically Performance Max for video and that, that is actually wrong because as we're gonna be going through, you've got a lot more targeting settings inside of demand gen, which you don't have in Performance Max. The one thing that is true with that is that demand gen is very much based on a YouTube spend. So your main platforms, which is gonna be spending is on the YouTube and the display network, but you also have the option to optimize it purely 100% for YouTube or 100% for display. Now we're gonna get into that a little bit further, but let me now just go through the rationale here. What Google is wanting to create with its demand gen campaigns is as the name suggests, as much as I really hate the name demand gen, I think it's really, really corny, but it's all about generating that demand. See that wordplay that Google's done there? Uh, you know, amazing, mind blowing. But what Google wanted with demand gen is it wanted to be enable brands to be able to engage with users who were not aware of your brand or not even aware of your product at the moment. So that you can start interrupting their search or interrupting their online sessions with your branded messages. And this is a core difference between these two types of campaigns. So Performance Max is built off your current conversion data and underlying that is your search term data. So the keywords which are best performing in your account. Whereas for demand gen, it is not based off those core keywords which are converting, it's based off the audiences. And especially what's happening because it's heavily reliant on video and image ads, you're looking at more of an interruption type of a campaign where you're interrupting their current session on YouTube or their current session browsing around the web and showing your ads. So you are targeting people who aren't in the active mode of completing a Google search for related product or service. So for me, when it comes to a demand gen campaign and when I would use it, I'm essentially using it for two core reasons. Firstly, if you've got a business which is starting to get what I call CPC resistance. CPC resistance is when you are looking at scaling your current, say for example, search campaigns, the easiest way to increase the profit of your Google Ads account, if you're happy with your conversion metrics, is just to start to slowly increase your budget. But what will eventually happen is that you will no longer be able to profitably scale your budget because if you increase your budget by 10%, your CPC goes up by 20% or 25%. So that's no longer profitable. So the other way that you go about doing that is to reach out to colder audiences. And a great way of doing that is through a demand gen campaign. Because because then you're moving away from the search network and you're starting to reach out to people on YouTube or in the display network. And then another core reason for why I engage demand gen is if you're dealing with a product or a service that has a high educational value in it. And what I mean by that is that people aren't directly searching for what your product or your service is. So there's not what we would call a lot of high intent search keywords. So that's another great way of using demand gen. So now we've gone through and covered the two core foundations of why the campaigns exist. So why do Google Google introduced Performance Max and why did Google introduce Demand Gen? Now what I wanna go through is I wanna go through three other core differences between these two types of campaigns. I'm gonna go through these really, really quick and the reason for that is because after the I give these three points, I'm gonna jump into a screen share so I can really show you some practical examples of these differences. Because I really wanna make this teaching as practical as possible. And the second main difference between these two types of campaigns is how they deal with the subject of audience targeting. For Performance Max, it very much goes down the path of what it calls signals. And what we mean by that is that you can't lock in Performance Max to target certain sections of audiences. You can feed in some different audiences, but Google makes it really, really clear that it's gonna go beyond those recommendations. And it's gonna find and target, and when they mean target, it's gonna spend your advertising money on audiences outside of those selections. And that's why it's a big no-no, and I would never create multiple asset groups instead of the one Performance Max campaign, which is essentially targeting the same products, but to different audiences audiences. That was kind of a really, really popular strategy, something that I didn't agree with when Performance Max came out, where people would create multiple asset groups targeting the same products. Their thought process was that it would launch out into different audiences, but Google was going to be going through and doing that anyway. And this is a core difference between demand gen, is that demand gen, while you do have the option to turn on optimized targeting, I highly recommend that you don't 
do that because what you can then do with your demand gen campaigns is that you can then not only target specific audiences and exclude other types of audiences. So perfect example is you could add your current converters as an exclusion or any specific audiences which you know don't convert. You can add them as an exclusion so that you're targeting specific audiences and you can also see data at those audience levels. Another core difference between demand gen and performance max is the control you have over the placement of your ads. With performance max, you don't really have any control at all. Yes, you can set up like a feed only campaign. There are little ways where you can sort of try and limit it, but ultimately you are not able to control where your ads appear with a performance max campaign. Whereas for demand gen, that is very, very different. If you want to only show your ads in the shorts feed in YouTube, you can do that. If you only want your ads to show on the display network, you can do that. If you only want your ads to show in long form, so in-stream ads in YouTube, you can do that. So you've got a lot more control over where your ads are placed. And then the next thing is all about the reporting and then with the reporting also the control. And what I mean by that is I mentioned this earlier is that for example, with your audience targeting inside a Performance Max campaign, you only get really aggregated data about the performance of your different audiences. Whereas in a demand gen campaign, you get it line by line. So you can actually see the clicks, the cost per conversion, and all of the different metrics that you want to see at an audience level, which then also allows you to go through and add in different optimizations at those different audience line levels. So now I know that was quite a little bit of information because we went through the second, third, and fourth main difference between Performance Max and Demand Gen. And as promised, let's now jump into a screen share so I can explain each of those ones and show you how you can go through and do that in your Google Ads account. Okay, so we're first gonna talk about the audience targeting. And this is the differences between your Performance Max campaign and your Demand Gen campaign. So when it comes to your audience targeting, inside a Performance Max campaign, you do this at what we call the asset group level. And the way that this functions is inside of your different asset groups, you can add what's called your signals. You can go through and add in different search themes. And also with your audience signal, this is where you can go through and add different interests and demographics, your own data. And you can actually block it down into different age groups and also show if you wanted to only female or only male. But what I do wanna highlight is this blue box in here where it says, in Performance Max campaigns, your ads will be shown to people beyond your selections to find new conversions. And that's what we were talking about. Performance Max, you can't lock this down. And that's why Google call them signals and not targeting. Because as Google says in here, signals provide valuable information about the people you want to reach and they really act as a guide. So it's not like a lock in target. While for a demand gen campaign, you can actually add this targeting in at a campaign level or an ad group level. Let's just go into here. And at your audience targeting, what you can also do is if you turn off this optimized targeting, so if you turn on optimized targeting, what this means is it effectively changes everything over to a signal and it performs the same way as performance max campaign. But if you don't use use optimized targeting and you set it into this audience, you can build out a lookalike audience or you can build out interests and demographics, so people that you wanna convert. And it's gonna be a lot more targeted on the different audiences which you're looking at targeting and how you're looking at set this up. So this gives you a lot more options as whether you wanna reach out to new audiences or whether you wanna use it a little bit more as a remarketing or whether there's some specific audiences that you wanna target. So that's about the audience targeting options. Now let's go into our ad placements. And what we're talking about here is where your ads appeared. So inside of a Performance Max campaign, the only place that you can see this is, is inside Insights and Reports. If you go into when and where your ads showed, so you can see your device data, you can see the time at which the ads showed, this is where you start to lose this information. And as well, when you're actually setting up the assets, so inside of the asset groups, when you're in the signals, you just don't have the same amount of targeting options as what you have inside of a demand gen campaign. So when we're inside of a demand gen campaign and we go into our ad groups, you can see through here, I'm gonna show you some extra changes that we're making to this campaign right now that we've just taken on because they've set up shorts only ad group and then also display ad group. If you go into this ad group and go into the individual ads, what you can do is you can actually choose where your ads were shown. So if you select this bar in through here, you can actually say that we want this ad to only appear in the shorts format. So by making that change is that we're showing it only into the shorts format, which once again 
is not an option that you have with your Performance Max campaigns. Now, the final one is I want to go into the levels of reporting that you get with Performance Max and Demand Gen. This has gotten better with Performance Max. When it first launched, you only saw this data. You can now go and see the table. You can also add in some extra columns. So if you want to see some more data around your cost, your impressions, your conversions, you can see that data at an asset group level. When you go into your insights, it gives what Google calls search term insights. But when it comes into the audience insight, you just see a very small amount of data. So you can just see, it talks about share of conversions and index. You can see whether it's optimized or whether you're targeting it. But with Demand Gen, you get a lot more data. So when you're inside your Demand Gen campaign and you go into audiences, if you go through to audience segments and you click show table, you're actually seeing the actual audiences which you've added. And then you're starting to see this different level of data in through here. And you can see this data at a campaign view or an ad group view. You can also see the data in terms of age, gender, and household income. One thing I will note, if you are marketing in the EU areas, you won't see the household income. But when you go through and compare that to a Performance Max campaign, you can just see that that audience data just is not there. So as you can see, there are some real clear differences between your Demand Gen and your Performance Max campaign. And if you were to summarize those differences, your Demand Gen campaign does give you a lot more controls than what you had with a Performance Max campaign. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just really, really important to know that you cannot, and by any means, summarize Demand Gen as just Performance Max for video because they function very, very differently. So now that we've gone through the reason for why Google created these different types of campaigns, and then I took you through how the campaigns are different in regards to audience targeting, the placement of your ads, and also the reporting data that it gives you. The fifth area that is very, very different for Demand Gen and Performance Max comes down to the conversion tracking. Now, I do need to stress with this is that some people are confused this, that Demand Gen uses different conversion tracking. That is not true, but it does by default give you some information of what's called view through conversions. View through conversions is available to be manually added so that you can see the reporting inside of a Performance Max campaign, but it doesn't use that data heavily to its bidding, whereas that is different for a demand gen campaign. And the reason for why demand gen has really increased the value in terms of its bidding for view through conversions is so that it brings it into line how a meta, so a Facebook or an Instagram campaign would track its conversions. And if you're not aware of this, a view through conversion is someone who sees your ad, but then may go through and complete a Google search and actually complete the conversion in a search campaign. With the problem being is that for demand gen, that can't be counted back because demand gen doesn't reach out to a search campaign. But you can put a very, very strong case that if someone had seen your ad on YouTube four or five times, then completed the search, that that conversion wouldn't have happened in that search campaign if the user hadn't first seen your ads inside of your demand gen campaign. And that's why you get by default your view through conversions data appearing when you go to the campaign line of a demand gen campaign. So the one thing that I would stress there, especially for a newer demand gen campaign, is that you don't really want to be reading too much into the individual conversion value versus the cost of the demand gen campaign. You really want to be placing a lot more value when you're reporting on a demand gen campaign about the view through conversions. So the way that I'm doing this is that after a three month period of running your demand gen campaign, that's when you start to really pull out and have a look at what was happening in your account before you started demand gen versus what was happening after you started demand gen. There's five really big differences between these two types of campaigns. And if you're really, really interested to see some further information about demand gen and all of its new updates and the best case uses for how to not only use, but also how to practically optimize your demand gen campaigns. I want you to go through and watch this interview that I ran with another Google Ads specialist called Thomas, which you can see right here. As always, thank you for joining me and remember to grab your optimization checklist by following that link in the description below. See you later.